If you're like most people, this calculator is basically like any other magic math box. If you took Algebra 2, you recognize this thing is a magic math box that can plot functions. And if you're a real nerd, you realize it's basically a pocket-sized computer. What makes it better than other pocket-sized computers, though? Well, besides having a bigger keypad and a color screen, you can easily program this one. Maybe you don't want to always have to type in the quadratic function. Or maybe you need to look up the atomic mass of Einsteinium. Or maybe you just don't feel like solving that Sudoku puzzle. Whatever the case, TI Basic has you covered. But wait, if this thing is really a graphing calculator, we should really be pushing its graphical capabilities. Sure, wireframe 3D graphics look alright, and rasterized graphics do look better, but with 15 colors to choose from, no shading, and rough edges, they still don't look even close to photorealistic. What we need is a rendering algorithm that can work on the low memory of the TI-84, but can still produce relatively complex graphics. Say hello to ray tracing. The idea of ray tracing is fairly simple, but it works backwards from traditional methods of rendering, like wireframe and raster graphics. Those approaches start with 3D shapes and paint each one onto the screen one at a time, add in a few smoothing and shading effects, and they're done. Ray tracing doesn't care about the shape or outlines of objects on the screen, though. Instead, it works pixel by pixel, asking the question, what can I see from here? Now, to answer this question, the algorithm calculates the intersection between a sight ray and the scene geometry. Think of it like a laser pointer. The ray will travel until it hits an object, and the first object it hits is the one that can be seen from that direction. Repeat this enough times, and you can start to trace out a picture of what the scene looks like, just by determining what objects you see first in each segment. What really makes ray tracing nice, though, is all of the visual effects you can easily pull off with it compared to other methods. After using rays to determine what can be seen in a certain direction, you can also figure out effects of light like shadows by seeing if anything is in the way of a light source, or reflection by bouncing the sight ray off an object. These effects are also usually more accurate to real life, because they don't take the same, close enough, shortcuts that raster graphics use. The one problem ray tracing has, especially on something slow like a graphing calculator, is that it takes much longer to draw a scene than raster graphics. In fact, on the graphing calculator, this image took about 6 hours to render. That's about .0000485 frames per second. Part of the reason most games run on raster graphics, while big budget studios that have render farms can use these higher quality graphics. The time concern though doesn't diminish the quality of the graphics, however, especially considering the incredible simplicity of the algorithms that cause them. This is nothing new though to graphics programming on a calculator. Honestly, I consider the TI-84 as a kind of graphics slow cooker. Sure, it may take hours to draw a scene, but when the program does finish, the results are impressive, especially for a magic math box intended to plot functions. If you're interested in viewing some of the TI Basic source code behind these graphics, or even just want to try the programs on your own calculator, download links are available in the description.